Mark Ofua is an animal doctor who is popularly known as the Snake Man in Lagos. Mark is a veterinarian with a difference and is also a wildlife conservationist. He rescues animals and returns them back to the wild. Mark runs an animal shelter in Lagos where he saves distressed animals like snakes, pangolins, cats, dogs, parrots, monkeys, crocodiles, amongst others. My name is Dr. Mark Opua. I am a veterinarian and I'm based here in Lagos. I hail from Delta States, Worry here in Nigeria and uh, my childhood growing up was filled with intrigue and love for wildlife, wild animals. I read books about zoos, I read books about the local wildlife we have here in Nigeria and in Africa, you know. So growing up and watching this wildlife disappear before my eyes was a big thing for me, you know. I heard about the, the cheetahs we had in Yankari Game Reserve and all that and growing up to know that these things are becoming extinct right in my presence was something for me. So naturally I grew up to love the study of animals. I became a veterinarian. I studied in the University of Ibadan where I earned my first degree, my master's degree and currently I'm doing my PhD there in wildlife practice. You know, so I became a veterinarian to save animals and along the way I got to see this huge deficit in the wildlife practice here in Nigeria. We have very, very little concepts for, of wildlife uh, medicine here in Nigeria and I decided to move in to fill the gap. So I'm um, gradually switching from um, companion animal medicine, which is what I have been. I'm switching to a wildlife practitioner and uh, my current PhD is on wildlife medicine. Uh, I'm based here in Lagos and uh, I have my practice, which originally was the small animal practice here in Lagos. And along the line, due to my passion, I started something, which is um, I started a small animal sanctuary for dogs and cats, which is the first of its kind here in Nigeria and then I also started the wildlife sanctuary which is also a first of its kind in Nigeria. So what we do here in the sanctuary is we rescue animals basically from the bushmeat trade. I have this relationship with hunters, with bushmeat sellers, I go to the bushmeat market whenever I can, rescue these animals, bring them here to the sanctuary. Um, when we rescue these animals they are usually in different phases of poor health. So we rehabilitate them, bring them back to health, and then we release back to the wild. We release to protected forests where we know these hunters can go and get them. And in the course of the years, we have saved so many animals from eagles, hawks, owls, to reptiles, snakes, crocodiles, monitor lizards, tortoises, pangolins, uh, you just name it, antelopes, crocodiles, different kinds of animals we have rescued. And um, this is what I'm dedicating my life to. This is what I'm dedicating myself to doing, rescuing these animals and rehabilitating them. So yes, yeah, that is what we do here at St. Mark's Animal Hospital and Shelter. Mark literally saves animals from untimely death in the hands of bushmeat traders and hunters. It treats injured ones and releases them back to the wild. Basically, like I said earlier, when I started, I started as a small animal practitioner. I actually worked for somebody. And um, after a couple of years of working for the person, I was able to buy the practice and have my own place. That gave me the opportunity I was looking for. So on one hand, I started my um, animal shelter, the dog and cat shelter, where I take in stray animals from the streets, rehabilitate and look for homes for them. And then also gave me the opportunity to go into the wildlife proper. So this is what launched me into the wildlife practice. These animals are fast disappearing from our forests. They are ending up in the bushmeat market where people buy them for food and all that. So I would visit the bushmeat market fascinated by these animals. And at times you see some of these animals live suffering on the table you know out of compassion i would rescue sometimes i have to buy if i have to but at times i try to switch stock my way and get these bushmeat sellers to release these animals to me and i would 
rehabilitate them and then release to the wild. So that basically started my wildlife journey. Mark considers himself as an advocate of snakes because snakes are not the mindless killing machine people uh, think they are. He believes they are peaceful creatures and they need some love like every other animal. His first encounter with a snake got him to realize that not all snakes are out to harm humans so he decided to read and learn more about them. He also implores people to read about snakes no fact about snakes and learn how to coexist with snakes. My introduction to snakes started in a very funny way. I remember vividly and it changed my thinking about snakes. I was in GSS 3 and I was preparing for a major exams. Now I was reading indoors but the family they were disturbing and I had to go to the garden to read where it was quiet. And as I was reading I felt something on my leg and then I looked and you know that shock. I was face to face with a cobra and the cobra was poised to strike you know i think i must have frozen in fear and for what seemed like an eternity the cobra and i were looking at ourselves you know and after a while the snake just turned on the ground and slithered away it had all the time all the opportunity in the world to bite me but it did not bite that started a question in my mind why did this snake not bite we were raised to believe that snakes were mindless killing machines that they see you and they bite you and all that this snake why did it not bite you know it got me fascinated about snakes and i started reading about them learning about them and i got to realize that most of the things over 98 percent of the things we were told about snakes were false were not true and we were raised with these fears and we were thought to kill snakes on sight. You see a snake, you kill it. So I realized that these guys just have a bad rap. They, they lied against. So I took it upon myself to be the voice for snakes, since they can't talk. And ever since then, I have started educating people to know more about snakes, to know that these guys are not the mindless killing machines we think they are, to let them know that we actually need these guys around us. They have a role they play and we need them around us. We need to learn to coexist with these peaceful creatures. They love peace and they don't want to attack, they don't want to bite. So since then I have seen myself as an advocate for snakes, the voice for snakes, and I tell people about snakes. So I call myself, or I'm called the snake man of Lagos, and I'm an advocate for snakes. Mark talks about how he releases the animals to the world in order for them to live safely from human influence. So when I rescue these animals, um, most of the time they are injured, weak, sick, some have a um, trap wound. So like if you look at this guy now, you can see the scar from the trap that cut it. Some of them have injuries from machetes, some of them gunshot wound. So the first thing that goes in is rehabilitation. I have to treat them, get them from dehydration, from weakness, get them well. The very young ones that I raise, I have to teach them to be able to hunt again, to be able to survive in the wild. And once they have gotten to this stage, then the next thing will be to release. Now we try to release them where they won't have that conflict with humans. Snakes and um, non-endangered species, I take them deep into the forest. At times I could drive as far as almost to Ibadan or neighboring states and make my releases deep in the forest. But endangered um, creatures that I know are um, threatened with extinction. I make my releases at special parks, protected parks, parks that I know they have rangers, some private, some government parks. That's why I make my releases, where I know they'll be able to live the rest of their life in peace. 
and safety from human influence. So we release, we make these releases where there will be very little or no human animal interactions. Mark Ofua believes that having more ends on deck would make wildlife recognized and well appreciated. Therefore, he implores people to take up wildlife by saving animals from going extinct. St. Mark's Animal Hospital basically is a veterinary hospital like any other veterinary hospital. And um, we attend to clients, dogs and cats and small animals and we, we're paid for the work we do. Now, St. Mark's Animal Shelter is a different ballgame. Um, these dogs and cats, this wildlife, we take care of them with our money. It's funded basically by the hospital, so the animal shelter is self-funded. Uh, we are registered as an NGO, and um, so we can operate um, and all that. But basically, we're self-funded. Um, I have this arrangement where I take from my profits and I take a certain percentage of the profit and put into the shelter to take care of the animals. The truth is, the work is immense. There's a whole lot of work to be done and there's a whole lot of money to be spent. The truth also is, I have gotten to the peak that I can manage by myself. If I'm going to be able to do more, if I'm going to be able to reach out to more, save more animals, expand my days and all that, then I'm going to have to have access to funds. I'm going to need donors, I'm going to need sponsors, I'm going to need people, partners who want to, who believe in what I'm doing and want to be a part of it and say, no, we can save more animals. And I'm very, very happy that um, Nigeria is beginning to wake up to the predicament of wildlife. The government is beginning to wake up to the predicament of wildlife, very interestingly, and they are willing to make moves to save our wildlife. Right now, they are not putting in monies yet, but they are putting in effort and laws and all that are coming into place that will protect our key wildlife from extinction. So I'm confident at the rate at which we're going that my children and their children will get some animals to see. Um, in my time, the cheetah became functionally extinct in Nigeria. In my time, the giraffe is going extinct. In my time, the rhinoceros became functionally extinct. In my time, the buffalo, elephants, these animals are going extinct. But if we all put our hands together to partner, we all put our hands together to say, oh, let's, we believe in your dream, we believe in your vision, and we want to work with you to save these animals, we can stop some of these animals from going extinct in our time. This baby I'm holding here is a sign of hope for the future. If I hadn't stepped in to save this baby, it would have died within hours of being born. You understand? It would have died within hours of being born. But right now, he has a chance to live and he'll be released to the world where he's going to continue procreation. So if we continue with this, we would have some good successes. Some of Mark's challenges as a wildlife conservationist includes finance, spacing and lots more. But he believes that there is so much to be done in animal rescue. He also believes that in every challenge encountered, there are people who are ready to change their mindset and perception about animals. The challenges in this work is immense. You do not want to think about it. Um, the first obvious one is finances, which I have mentioned. I just wish there is more money to do more because there's still a whole lot to be done. I see what I'm doing as just scratching the surface. There's still a whole lot to be done. This is one pangolin. For every one pangolin that I save, 10 more are on the bushmeat table that are going to die today. You understand? So there's still so much that can be done, okay? So um, apart from finances, there's a challenge of space. Basically, I use my practice as my sanctuary. So I need space to be able to save more animals. If you go around the sanctuary, the place is full. I have crocodiles here. I have tortoises. I have monkeys. I have different animals that I have saved. The place is full, so I need space. And then also the run-ins with the government.
Um, another crazy challenge that I have is work, social life, family balance. Um, I almost do not have a social life. That one I've sacrificed already. Um, but balancing work with friends and family is another problem. The work is all consuming. At times I spend up to 18, 20 hours a day with these animals, um, rehabilitating them, feeding them, and trying to get them back, you know. So definitely it affects my family life. It affects my time with my kids and my wife. And it's created a problem some time ago, but they are beginning to see the good of what I'm doing and uh, they are beginning to understand that I'm doing something essential and they have to, sac to make that sacrifice. Um, when National Geographic came here to do a, pro a, a, a documentary on my work, I think that was about when they came to realize that, oh, so what he's doing is important after all for National Geographic to come and, you know, and all that. So it marked a turning point in my relationship with them. They came to accept the fact that daddy is doing something important and they need to give him the support and the time. So yeah, we're beginning to strike a balance and a middle point. It's not been easy, but it's been worth it. Mark Ofua is dedicated to saving animals and he sees these animals as a success because these animals have brought him the success he desires. Success in animal rescue and my lowest actually has to do with this creature that I'm holding. Um, it actually happened to be the same animal that gave me my biggest success and my lowest. Uh, it was a first, this is a white-bellied pangolin, which are the species we have here in Nigeria abundantly. The first white-bellied pangolin baby that I rescued from the bushmeat trade actually got this pangolin a day old and without information i didn't know there's no information on the internet i didn't know pangolin people to ask about i used my common sense and my passion and my emotions and i was able to raise this animal successfully i called him juba i was able to raise him successfully and release to the wild i think that was my biggest success and it actually was the first white-bellied pangolin anywhere in the world that was hand-raised and successfully released to the world. That was my biggest success and it was actually also the lowest moment of my rescue career because I didn't know I was that attached to Juba at the point when I made the release. When I released Juba, it was as if something was taken out of me, you know. Honestly, and a bit ashamed to say this, but for like two days I couldn't eat. I was moody and then I kept going to the forest to see if I would see him. <laughs> to see if I would have a glimpse of him, you know. So, uh, incidentally, my uh, most exciting moment was also the lowest one. Yeah, but as it is, these pangolins, they have taken my, my attention and a huge chunk of my passion and my finances also more than the older wildlife because I think I try to tell myself that it's because of their threatened condition, they are threatened with extinction but the truth is once you interact with a pangolin, I have heard other pangolin people say this too, once you interact with a pangolin there's a bond you create that you can never let go. Once you go pangolin you can never go back, I promise you. Left to mark everyone should become an animal advocate we should all treat the animal with love such that the ones on the brink of extinction would not go on extinct so my dream is to see more people like me doing more than i can do doing better with better effort and better results that i can um, i hope to reproduce myself and have people everywhere not just me but people in every state in every local government in every region rescuing animals speaking for animals rehabilitating animals and giving our local wildlife a second chance so my dream is to have rescuers and rehabilitators everywhere in nigeria and i'm working towards it um, i'm working with the schools the universities to establish wildlife medicine in our veterinary schools then I'm working with young enthusiasts, veterinarians and um, whatnot, animal scientists, working with them 
to start this thing because we need to reproduce it everywhere. I cannot attempt to Lagos State alone, not to talk of Nigeria as a whole. So we need to have enthusiasts like me, better than me, everywhere in this country and in Africa as well because this wildlife crisis is Africa-wide. Will you join Mark, the snake man of Lagos, to shine like a star in saving animals?